Hello everyone, Carson here, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a quick rundown of Google's VPS hosting. Now, before we do get into this rundown, just a reminder to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because I post new content every single day and you don't want to miss out. Now, Google's VPS hosting is pretty good. There are arguably some better ones, which I will get to actually later in this video, but for now, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of the features. They offer hourly and even minute level billing, which is very, very good. Google's VPS also has a DDoS protection, which is another benefit to their VPS. Now a downside is they don't actually offer any backups. So snapshots and images are actually available, but they're charged extra as storage, which can really add on to your price. Next up, they do let you set up SSH keys, which is another benefit to their VPS. They also have monitoring charts, which is pretty nice in case you're not familiar with what that is. It basically just lets you monitor all the technical aspects and it displays it in a chart for you. Now I understand all of this is pretty technical, but we're going to get on to the more simplified version in a minute. Another problem with Google's VPS is you cannot upgrade it from the admin console. Another thing worth noting is they also only accept credit cards as a form of payment, which can be a downside just depending on what you want to use, PayPal or your credit card. Finally, they do not have a firewall, so you're going to be responsible for adding that yourself. Now, they obviously charge by the benchmark minute, so I can't really tell you the prices for their VPS per se, because it's very volatile, and as I'm sure you are aware about VPSs, they don't really have a set price per month unless you're buying a set amount of data per month. Now they do have a large catalog of available features, but with all those downsides and the addition of not really being easy to use, Google's VPS can actually be not one of the best VPSs on the market, especially for a smaller customer. I actually recommend other VPSs instead of Google's VPS, like my number one VPS in 2021, Bluehost. Whereas Google is a much bigger platform undoubtedly, and they do offer pretty good VPS services, in my opinion, they're not really geared toward customers and toward small business owners and toward people who just want to run a few websites. Google's VPS systems are geared towards more large businesses, people with actual IT managers, stuff like that. Because of this, I do actually recommend you check out Bluehost if you're looking for a simple VPS. If you're not, go ahead and head over to Google's VPS and check that out. But I'd wager that Bluehost's VPS can actually offer you the resources you need because it's very scalable and it's much, much easier to use. It's much more intuitive. Personally, I could log in and within like five to 10 minutes, I knew everything I needed to do when I was reviewing it, when I was testing it. Because of this, I'm actually going to leave a link in the description to Bluehost's VPS. If you want to check it out and receive special discounts, you can go ahead and do that. Thanks for watching. Remember to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and I will see you in the next video.